Thank you everyone for joining us for this community call. Um, and I mean, thanks for being here with us to discuss P Network. Um, and today we are happy to have um, our guest, Jeremy from Pirion DAO, uh, who is a community project working on uh, setting up a community owned P Network node. So we will hear more uh, from Jeremy during this call, uh, who will also share his thoughts about uh, uh, P-Network and, uh, uh, you know, as a community member, uh, what he thinks about what we are doing and what he likes about the project. Um, and yeah, just to have, you know, um, a feeling of uh, what the community thinks about the project and what they would like to see. So. Uh, let's start with uh, a short uh, recap of all of the achievements um, that uh, the project has achieved during uh, uh, the last couple of months. So I am Alice and I work on business development and operations for P Network in terms of growing the ecosystem. That's pretty much what uh, uh, part of what I do. Uh, in, so in terms of growing the ecosystem, we have worked uh, on um, a series of new releases and collaborations with other projects that are focused on increasing uh, um, the number, uh, the, the total value locked for P network, as well as adoption in general. One way to measure it is in terms of cross chain transaction volumes, uh, but there are other ways as well. So like, for example, number of users, number of uh, uh, P tokens holders and things like that. Uh, so I'm happy to report that uh, our numbers are growing um, and we as a project, we have experienced a significant growth over the past three and six months. Um, specifically, during the last month, uh, P Network nodes uh, were able to um, to get uh, $90,000 in cross-chain transaction fees that were, again, uh, collected thanks to cross-chain transaction volumes processed by P Network. Um, and the, the afterwards, uh, uh, those fees were distributed to P Network nodes. So great achievement for P Network nodes there. Um, and also um, that's a clear way showing uh, that the project is expanding and growing. In terms of expansion, we are indeed, um, we, we have released new cross-chain integrations. At the moment, we are integrated with 10 different blockchains. Um, two of the latest uh, ones that we have introduced are Binance Smart Chain and Polygon. So we have, after the release, we have worked on growing those networks. Um, so one thing that we did is collaborate, co collaborating with a few big uh, projects, um, creating incentivized liquidity pools. This means that people are able to uh, basically include their assets. Let's take, for example, PBTC on Binance Smart Chain, so tokenized Bitcoin on BSC. They're able to put it into the liquidity pools and get rewards for that. So on this, we have, for example, collaborated with PancakeSwap on BSC, with CommaSwap, with uh, Smart Dex. Um, so we are hoping um, through this uh, strategy to grow um, P tokens uh, on those uh, chains even further. Uh, same as we did previously with other blockchains, including Ethereum and EOS, for example. Um, so something else that we worked on in parallel to grow P Network is collaborating with smaller projects um, on custom bridges. So that's the case, for example, of OpenDAO or uh, Chain Guardians. We have collaborated with their teams on the release of specific bridges for their token to go cross chain. Uh, and that again has proven successful because some of these tokens have contributed into growing P Network's total value locked, uh, have contributed into growing our cross-chain transaction volumes. Uh, so 
for example, um, Chain Guardians is one of those. Uh, and we have, it, during our last uh, uh, fees distribution for P Network nodes, we have indeed distributed CGG tokens coming from, um, from that, speci that specific bridge. So uh, we are happy that, uh, uh, we are happy to see that this collaboration uh, are helping to grow uh, P Network as an ecosystem. Something else that um, um, one of our collaboration has brought to is uh, having uh, um, having P tokens, uh, a P tokens bridge from KuCoin to Ethereum. That's uh, basically thanks to our uh, collaboration with Telos. So as you may know, Telos is uh, um, a sidechain of uh, EOS um, and they have been recently listed on KuCoin, but the token that has been listed there is actually the P tokens version. So this means that we do have um, the first P tokens bridge from KuCoin to Ethereum. Uh, as some of you may remember, that's something that we did with Bitfinex as well for a bunch of tokens, including PNT uh, some time ago. So we are happy to have now our second exchange supporting uh, P tokens bridges. Uh, so uh, on another topic, uh, another key milestone that we have achieved um, during uh, the past couple of months is the launch of the first NFT portal. So P network portals enable cross chain interactions between smart contracts. Uh, so it's, uh, um, it's a feature built on top of P tokens bridges uh, that anyone can leverage to build a P network portal. Um, and that can be done in a variety of fields, including DeFi, including NFTs. So for example, we ourselves have launched um, the first NFT portal that connects NFTs um, between Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain. So as you may know, these are two of the biggest uh, smart contract enabled blockchains. So we felt like this was a good opportunity to be leveraged. Also uh, considering uh, you know, the current ecosystem uh, we are living in as an industry where NFTs uh, are, uh, um, are getting more and more interesting. So we thought this could be a good opportunity for P network to get more visibility and also to offer something useful to the NFTs ecosystem. So again, we have we have uh, collaborated with Chain Guardians uh, on uh, um, an NFT uh, portal for the Chain Guardian NFTs that are now available also on BSC through P network, um, with the goal of make, of making cross chain uh, movements. Um, friendlier for the end user and simpler to process. We have also launched uh, a version two of our DAP, of our PTOKEN DAP. So now you will see the interface is completely new and remade, is much simpler, it's Uniswap-like. So again, we think that this um, should improve the user experience for uh, um, whoever wants to use uh, uh, P tokens or P network portals. Uh, they can access from one single panel and do whatever they like cross chain from there. Uh, so, change, slightly changing topic. Um, I'm happy to report that Educard is officially shipping. So, we have a few users that have received the Educard already. Thomas is one of them. Um, proudly showing his Edu card. So Edu card, for those of you who don't know it, um, it's a very cool DeFi card. Um, it's developed on layer two for conveniency. Uh, and it's what I like to call a next generation crypto card because it, it basically uh, sticks to um, the decentralized finance uh, philosophy in the sense that it lets users uh, stay in control of the, their, funds, their, their funds until the last mile. So it's very nice. It's uh, uh, now shipping. 
Uh, it's integrated with P tokens. So from there, you can spend PNP, you can spend P tokens. At the moment, we have PBTC and PLTC, uh, as well as a couple of stable coins. Uh, so yeah, try it, order it, uh, and let us know if you like it. Uh, I'm waiting for mine to arrive. So <laughs> hopefully it will arrive this week and I will report back on how's the experience, but yeah. Um, and also, I mean, if you guys want to share your experience about the Educart here or in our uh, Telegram channel or on social media, feel free to do it uh, and let's spread the word about it so that more and more people will get to know the project. Um, and finally, last but not least, uh, another important milestone has been reached for P Network. This time is, uh, um, is important for our progressive decentralization process. And specifically, we have introduced the uh, uh, fee earning P Network nodes. So as you guys may know, we had introduced the P Network nodes uh, uh, so moving a step forward in our progressive decentralization roadmap uh, in December last year. And recently we have introduced uh, um, fee earning P network nodes, which means that basically uh, nodes get rewarded for the important contribution they give to the project since uh, they are uh, uh, a key role that helps the project to be decentralized and also to secure uh, the cross chain interaction. Uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this, they are being rewarded pretty well since uh, they made uh, 90K over the past month. So that's great for them. And uh, hopefully we will see more P network nodes uh, joining to expand uh, the network as well as uh, uh, you know, more fees being accrued thanks uh, to a growth uh, in cross chain volumes. So on this note, uh, I will introduce today's guest, with, who is uh, Jeremy from Pirion Dao. Uh, so here's to you, Jeremy. Hello, uh, I'm Jeremy, founder of Pirion. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our collaboration with the network. Um, Pirion essentially is a staking service that's owned and operated by a DAO, uh, Pirion DAO. And Pirion DAO uh, governs all the pools in the ecosystem, as well as ION token issuance. Um, so when you're staked in any of the pools in, in Pirion ecosystem, you're actually earning ION. So like the PNT node pool, you're actually earning a lot more rewards than most may realize. Um, so you earn the native node rewards, which is 0.25% pegout fees, 0.05% uh, uh, portal fees. And then you're also earning P network uh, DAO rewards, which is 42% right now. And it's gonna be soon changing to 21%. Um, so basically uh, when that was in a native node rewards, and then on top of that, you earn ION and that opens you up to a whole nother set of rewards. Uh, so when you earn that ION in the PNT node pool, uh, you actually stake that back into the Pirion DAO and you earn three things. You earn 50% uh, APY compounded monthly. You earn governance power, proportional governance power. And then you also are exposed to a diverse asset pool. Um, this diverse asset pool is comprised of all the fees that Pirion collects uh, for all the different pools. So like for the PNT node pool, Pirion takes 10% of those fees uh, to cover the overhead for the node to maintain it. And then the remainder of it actually goes into the Pirion DAO. So as a PNT node pool member, you actually earn part of the fees back that Pirion takes um, from being staked in the Pirion DAO. Then on top of that, uh, all the other pools that Pirion takes a 10% fee from. So, so for instance, we have uh, an X day validator stake pool. So when Pirion takes fees from there, it goes into the Pirion DAO. And uh, then as a PNT node pool member, you earn those PNT fees back. And then you also earn the fees collected from other pools. So like the stake pool. So what this does is helps to diversify your portfolio and helps protect you uh, against market volatility. Um, and what we look, the way we look at it as nodes and validators, we look at it as a hedge against market volatility. 
Uh, so when you're actually owning or co-owning a node, you're, you're, you're not so concerned about the price going up or down um, because no matter what, you're, you're gonna be earning one way or another. Um, and it's actually really interesting for P Network because if you look, if you go to pnetwork.watch that has all the node rewards, has all the node data, um, you can actually see from this recent market plummet that P Network nodes have actually earned more than they ever have. And this is from the peg out fees. So this is something as a, from owning or co-owning a P network node, this is something you have to look forward to. So not only do you, you know, gain value if the market goes up in general, but then you also have to look forward to, you know, if the market drops, now you have, you know, this big peg out payday coming um, from owning or co-owning this, this node. Um, so if you are looking to support P network in a more meaningful way and for the long term, and you also want to protect yourself against market volatility, owning or co-owning a P network node is, is the best bet. It's the best way to go. Um, and this kind of leads into just the, an idea that I know has been proposed already um, to lower the PNT node, uh, the, P, uh, the P network threshold to become a node. Um, and I think that we should maybe visit it again um, and, and kind of discuss it. And I actually saw someone in the, in the recent uh, proposal that Thomas posted that someone actually said something very similar that I was surprised that I saw it on there that they were talking about lowering the threshold to like 100,000 PNT. Because um, currently uh, the PNT node pool actually has uh, over 100,000 PNT staked in it. We're, we're more than halfway there to, to reach the 200,000 goal. But if we were to say lower it to 100,000, we would already be there um, we would already be able to add a node, which would uh, continue to, for the, the progressive decentralization and then also add its security. And then we would be able to start up another node pool and give more community members a chance to you know, participate in this. Um, so I would just like to know maybe your thoughts on this, Thomas. Yeah, th this is a really interesting point because you know, we have um, like proposed we, have made, we, we made a proposal um, like a few months ago for lowering uh, this uh, threshold uh, and indeed it didn't pass, but now it may be a good time to propose it again because I know that even back then it was very controversial. So it wasn't that the majority was against, it was just uh, you know, very close uh, to um, you know, the 50% threshold or something like that. And I, I remember, if I remember correctly, um, there were not enough votes um, in favor, uh, in the, the for to, to to have the proposal pass within a rich quorum, basically. So um, you know, I, I'm all for it. Um, I just I, I would just like uh, to see the community voicing a stronger interest for proposing it, that vote again. Um, and I mean, from my perspective, the proposal we have just submitted on the forum for community discussion is something that is like a higher priority for a discussion and that maybe we can dive into this later. Um, but lowering the uh, limit from 200,000 to 100,000 uh, for nodes is something that, you know, may be proposed next uh, in the DAO. And, you know, personally, I, I didn't vote and the, like our company with company tokens didn't vote. Um, so, and normally we, we never vote because we don't want to influence uh, votes, even if we don't have the majority actually, but we don't want, you know, the community to perceive like, uh, um, you know, the team uh, has a strong influence on the, um, like, uh, actual results of the voting proposals. Um, so the, the fact that it was so controversial, that, that the 200, that the old proposal was so controversial, to me was very valuable because it meant that, you know, People are actually, um, you know, um, trying to, you know, think about the implications and um, not everyone agreed with the vote and they, they were not afraid to vote against, right? So this is, this is yes. something important. Um, so in general, I, I just wanted to start with like, uh, maybe asking you some more questions around Ethereum. Um, like something that um, I, I'm not sure I fully understand. So maybe it would be useful to, uh, to hear uh, from you is like um, um, is a doubt I have around uh, governance. So um, there are basically two kinds of tokens, right? One is the ION token, um, which is the one that basically 
um, participants into the DAO uh, um, while um, um, providing liquidity, such as PNT, right? So this is the iron farming, let's say. Um, and then there is like the, I don't know how to call it, like the IOU uh, token for the PNTs you have deposited. Like if I deposit a given number of PNT, um, I get basically a receipt saying, look, you have deposited X. So, um, you know, uh, you can redeem it back for the original PNT maybe if the DAO agrees, right? Um, so as for governance, uh, uh, let's say if, if I stake uh, 1,000 PNT, like um, um, what's, I mean, does the ION token give me the ability, for example, to propose um, the, you know, starting a new pool um, or is it about opening voting proposals? I mean, um, which which one uh, like what what token serves what purpose like what is okay. iron exactly for is it just for getting a chunk of the fees accrued uh, from the other uh, like pools such as the X die one uh, or is it more for like the governance of all pools or for the governance uh, of new initiatives around the Ethereum DAO in general? Okay, yeah. So when you stake PNT in the pool, uh, you earn, uh, you get a proportional non-transferable sh uh, pool share. Um, so it's it's not technically a token in that sense. Um, it it's more of a non-transferable pool share that then says, you know, you put this much PNT in, so now you get this many shares, which will represent the amount of PNT you put into the pool. Um, and then when you stake, you earn ion on top of that. Um, and then the ions main purpose um, is to stake it as so you have the PNT pool and that PNT pool has its own DAO. It, it's governed by its own DAO and that and the power in that in the PNT node pool it is uh, based on the shares. So it's based on the pool shares, a one to one representation of the PNT. Um, and then when you have ion, you stake that in a separate Perion DAO um, and that gives you governance power over so that gives you a reward share of the fees and it also gives you governance power over future initiatives um, and so basically it's a shared treasury of ion where basically we decide on future initiatives and uh, then ion is uh, used to stream into the different pools as like as rewards as like farming rewards um, and and that's the basically the, the purpose of the the pool shares and then the PN and then the ion tokens that you would gain from from that pool. I, I'm curious. Yeah, th thanks for explaining that. This was really useful. Um, can can you maybe like um, share some more details uh, around like your experience uh, with the XDI pool since that one seems to be more advanced and the milestones have been reached. One in the P network once. Um, it's uh, it's 55 or 60 percent if I remember correctly. Um, so it's it's growing, uh, but it's it hasn't reached yet the minimum threshold. While with the X die ones you you have, so how, how is it going? Uh, so it's front? going good. Um, we we are still waiting there. Um, so X day is currently uh, updating their threshold. So they currently have a two a twenty thousand stake threshold. Um, they're actually lowering their threshold to two thousand. Um, we have now uh, well over 5,000 already staked, so we are ready, um, but uh, the validator is not up yet. Um, it should be this week or next week, the latest. Um, I, I'm talking with the team, you know, basically every day about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's basically the same kind of scenario. You know, you put in, you put in one stake, you get one pool share, um, and then you, you earn ion as well. Um, so uh, it is basically still in the same kind of state as T Network, still uh, waiting to launch the validator. Um, since uh, what we did, um, you know, reach reach the requirement. Uh, but yeah, excellent. Yeah, looking forward to see those nodes running as well. And um, yeah, sorry, I had a question, uh, but I I just forgot. <laughs> so um, um, so in in general. How, how many like users uh, um, have participated so far, like unique users uh, in the two initiatives? Uh, like in the XDI one, did you get like more smaller participants or some bigger ones? Um, and uh, do you have any number you can share around uh, like uh, the number of users um, that, uh, you know, are 
uh, interacting with Ethereum DAO and with the two active pools? Uh, yeah, so uh, there's actually in like both pools, I'm pretty sure it has like 20 to 30 uh, different members. Um, and in both pools, there are some small stakes. So in the PNT pool, it's a minimum of 100 PNT. 100 PNT you can put in and you can co-own one of these nodes. Um, and then there's also someone just recently put 50,000 PNT in, in one shot. So, um, well, you know, so there's that, a lot that, of variance uh, like between the yeah, different, uh, different exactly. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. know, and it's just yeah. we're, we're trying to appeal to all levels of investors, you know, whether you're a small investor or, you know, uh, uh, or a large investor, um, you know, we are here to, to offer some solutions so that way we can because our, our focus is to help support the underlying infrastructure of the projects that we believe in, like T-Network, you know, and we want to add more security. We want to help with the decentralization. You know, that is our focus. Right. And at the same time, we want to offer people, you know, a hedge against normal investments, like in just investing in assets and holding it, you know, it, it, or even just staking it for, you know, some APY, it's still, still different when you, when you're owning this, you know, P network node, you're, you're guaranteeing yourself, you're going to consistently stay earning while your PNT is locked and safe. So you still have your underlying collateral that's still going to be sitting there and, you know, accruing value over time while you're also then continuing to earn off of this node. So it's like, if you're, if you want to support P network and you, you know, anyone out there, you know, who's really looking to, this is one of the best ways to do it for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, being able to contribute to spinning up a, no, a full node for a DP network with just 100 PNT is like, uh, it's really amazing. I know that many users actually, um, they are concerned, understandably, um, with the gas costs of interacting with DP network DAO because maybe they don't have enough PNT to justify, uh, you know, that investment or that cost. Yeah. But in this case, uh, everything is basically being done on the XDAI blockchain. So you don't right. really have, you know, high gas costs to interact with it. And indeed, one question I wanted like, uh, to ask you to give you the opportunity to explain uh, to the community um, how the, that part works is like um, um, how um, may, maybe if you, if you can dive a little bit into uh, the details of interacting with the DAO via XDAI, uh, I know it will be useful because I've seen some questions from the community where people were a bit concerned um, of having to switch blockchain because they were not super familiar with that, right? Maybe in some right. cases they mostly use Ethereum and they didn't really know what they had to do in order to interact with Ethereum since it was on a different uh, blockchain. But since, uh, you know, um, it, it, it can attract and it wants to attract all kinds of users, including small ones, uh, being on a chain which is so cheap compared to Ethereum so is definitely something that makes sense. So maybe can, can, can you say something about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, XDAI is uh, an EVM, an Ethereum virtual machine compatible blockchain. So that means you can just use your MetaMask. Uh, you just change the RPC to XDAI, and uh, which is, is very simple. The instructions are on Perion as well for anyone interested. Um, but you can use your MetaMask. You just simply just change the network to XDAI on your MetaMask. And now you're able to interact with XDAI chain. Um, and they even have uh, faucets available to get free X day for, for uh, transaction fees. Now, it, it sounds a little crazy for anyone who's used to Ethereum fees, but on an X day, it literally costs like 0. 0.0001 of, of, of a dollar. So like you're, you're talking about fra fractions of a cent to, to, yeah. to transact here. So yeah, this, is why, yeah, this is why we chose X day. Um, because for all the governance, for voting, and, you know, for doing all the DAO activities, it can get expensive. You know, anyone on Ethereum knows that. And uh, this is why we chose XDAG um, for that reason, because it makes governance, uh, you know, more viable. Yeah. Um, excellent. Yeah, I, I think th th this is like... A um, a great example I want to reference uh, a bit later in the call um, when I, I will dive a little bit into the EduCard as well because in that case um, we chose to go with um, we, we, we had chosen to go with uh, Loopring for the exact same reason um, but one year ago like um, um, there were no layer tools uh, that were 
um, you know, convincing enough back then or that had enough traction uh, to choose other than Loopring. And, you know, differently than Perion, uh, with EA Ducab, we just need to do transfers. So it's a much simpler use case and doesn't need a fully fledged, you know, EVM compatible blockchain, let's say, similarly to the to XDAI. So in your case, it totally made sense, you know, uh, since you need the DAO and to have uh, voting interactions and more complex stuff going um, to, you know, have something like XDAI. So I, I totally understand and support, uh, you know, this choice you guys made. It just makes sense. Yeah. Excellent. Um, cool. C can you maybe um, uh, like let, let, let's change topic and maybe uh, focus a little bit on the like uh, proposal we have just uh, sent the mm -hmm. forum yeah. um, for discussion. I just wanted to know what was uh, your your opinion about that. Uh, maybe maybe let, let me first uh, for anyone who is listening just very briefly summarize it. Um, so the pro the problem or like the the point open for discussion is the following that basically. Um, as Jeremy um, was reminding everyone, um, like the P Network uh, um, DAO reward for voters is actually decreasing for, from 42% to 21% in a couple of months, right? So the first year it was planned to uh, be at 42% and then second year 21% and then zero. Why? Because basically it was supposed to be an initial like incentive to motivate people to put PNT tokens at stake in the DAO and to get involved with DAO governance voting and to familiarize themselves with the process and to uh, you know follow the project and engage with the community and while voting in order to to vote and to know what they are voting for or against. Right. Um, I think this worked out quite nicely. We have approximately one thousand people participating with the DAO and um, you know. Many of them use the Edu wallet, uh, some don't. But it can be used directly via MetaMask. So, you know, the, anyone can basically use it. Um, now, the proposal is about uh, anticipating the reduction of this 42% uh, uh, reward to 21% a couple of months in advance. So, in a way, it's sort of, uh, we are sort of asking uh, people. Um, in the uh, like community members and the DAO stakers to give up some uh, like uh, rewards, which may seem counterintuitive. Why would you vote for you know earning less fees, less less less? Sorry, not less fees, but less rewards. It doesn't make sense, right? Um, and but th th there is a reasoning, and the reasoning is that um, the tokens that um, basically don't get distributed. Uh, the PNT tokens that don't get distributed go, they, they get allocated to the P Network DAO treasury. So they are still a community governed tokens. They are simply not distributed out to the community uh, in that manner. So the vote is about um, um, basically reducing um, like uh, early this 42% to 21%, which practically speaking, if you do the proportion and everything, you, if you do the math, you will see that it's just a matter of giving up 3.5% of what you have at stake in the DAO. So it's not, it's not that much, but uh, the DAO treasury would actually benefit from it by having at its disposal more than 1.5 million PNT tokens, which is quite a lot. So this is a high number, which the DAO then would use for example, to allocate those funds for other initiatives, such as the um, the liquidity pools farming initiatives, just to give an example. Um, the proposal indeed is not just about that, it's also about other two points. One is like uh, stopping to give rewards for liquidity pools, like farming rewards, to liquidity pools that um, are not being very successful, such as uh, the PLTC, ETH one on Uniswap, like there is a pool, Litecoin, P, P tokenized Litecoins, um, and ETH on Uniswap that we are currently rewarding. However, uh, it hasn't really uh, been really successful compared to others we are incentivizing, such as the Cure one and a few others. Uh, because if you look at the total value lock in like uh, Litecoins within the P network, uh, is rather small, and also the volumes in the in that pool are rather small. So basically, we, the DAO is giving up 15,000 PNT per week. So we are giving up basically um, 60,000 PNT every month 
for our liquidity pool, which is not being very successful. So the idea is basically to stop that reward as well, so that the DAO treasury can benefit from it and have 60,000 extra PNT every month to allocate differently. For example, to other pools, to new pools, um, or maybe to you know increase the reward for uh, pools that we are already rewarded. Just to give an example. Um, so the the third point, which I think is really important, um, is to stop um, rewarding uh, uh, voters that are not participating to vote to voting proposals. Right now, um, like the the logic of distribution of the rewards is based on the fact that for every epoch, and an epoch is like a two weeks period, uh, there may be more voting uh, proposals uh, submitted. And basically, in order for to enable people to um, like uh, skip a vote if they don't know what they want to vote, or you know, to avoid watching it on a daily basis, let's say, uh, initially we thought it was a good idea. Um, basically to, to reward everyone who voted in proposals within the epoch other than one. So you could skip one. So for example, if there is one vote in the epoch, everyone in the DAO gets um, a reward, currently is getting a reward from the DAO regardless of their participation to the vote. Even if they don't vote, they will still get the reward. Now, if you have two votes within the same epoch, for example, um, everyone who does who casts at least one vote uh, will get the reward. Who doesn't vote to, um, to, to neither one or the other, um, basically um, doesn't get anything. So you must vote at least one vote. Now, the proposal is about stopping to give this, uh, um, like uh, to, to make the, to, to do this exception and basically force everyone who wants to get a reward to always participate to voting. Why? Because like for the last 10 months, what we have seen is that normally because of gas costs and other reasons, um, we, we never had more than what one vote per epoch, for every epoch. So it doesn't make much sense to have this logic in and it's rewarding uh, DAO stakers who don't participate to governance. So we want to, to, to force everyone who participates in DAO to basically um, vote and participate to governance because this is what and uh, you know, uh, this is basically a healthy behavior for um, community members, and this is what should be rewarded. Not just the simple staking, but also you know staking and voting um, all the times. So the proposal um, is about basically um, restructuring a little bit those incentives in order for the DAO treasury to benefit from it and have more funds at disposal to uh, to you know fund new initiatives, basically. And I think this is a very important uh, um, vote and people should, uh, that, that you know, participating in the network should not just look at their own pockets. And, um, you know, because what we are asking, what we are proposing the community to give up is just 3% reward one-off, basically, which is a rather small incentive compared to the numbers we normally talk about, right? Um, but, you know, this is about socializing uh, uh, a very small loss in order for the wider DAO, for the P network DAO, to benefit from it. So it's basically uh, a vote where you should be altruistic a little bit and think about uh, what's good for the community as a whole, what's good for the DAO, and not just for, for your pocket, right? Um, so we have submitted a proposal into the forum uh, explaining all this, so you can read it at forum.p.network. Um, and, you know, we are like either eager to know what the community thinks. So if you have any feedback uh, or you, if you want to change something in the proposal, this is the moment to do it. Um, we want to submit it for, uh, you know, on in, in the DAO for, uh, for voting. But first we want to see if anyone has ideas uh, or if anyone wants to reiterate or change something in the proposal before the submission. Uh, and, you know, it's just an open discussion. Uh, even if it doesn't pass, everything will be fine, right? It's just that the DAO maybe in the future may not have enough funds um, to, you know, uh, to, to fund some other farming initiatives or things like that. Um, and since Jeremy is so much into uh, like our community and is an active participant, uh, participant I, I wanted to know what, what was his take and what was his opinion uh, um, around that proposal and if he had any um, feedback to share or any idea on what he would change uh, within that proposal or 
or, or a totally different proposal around the same topic? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, agreeing with, you know, everything that you proposed. I mean, I think it's fine to, to cut it short two months, you know, just so that way we have, you know, more PNT available to, you know, create, you know, more liquidity initiatives. And I think that's very important for PNT and fee tokens. And uh, I think it's smart to, to trim the fat off of, you know, the other pools that, you know, aren't performing well. I think that makes sense. And, um, and I mean, I'm, I'm definitely also for, you know, forcing people to be more active and participate in the DAO. Um, I think that is something vital to build a strong foundation for a community, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because I've noticed that there's like a split in the, in the P network community. There's TNT holders and then there's like P token users. And I think that we need to think uh, of some ways to kind of bring those two sides together on a united front. Um, and I think, you know, starting to force people to be, you know, more active and participate in the DAO, I think that's a, a good step in the right direction. Thanks for saying that because this is yeah. exactly like this is a very interesting point and I, I wanted to share some numbers around the number of P tokens users since we are now um, like tracking it. So if you look on pnetwork.watch, you can see that the user, the total number of users, which is calculated as the total number of unique addresses on the different blockchains we support that hold uh, Pnet, uh, like P tokens. Not PNT. This doesn't include PNT holders. This is just uh, uh, P tokens users across different blockchains. In total, we have uh, more than forty-one thousand number of uh, users. While the active users, which we define as um, like the number of the number of users which hold uh, P tokens and has made transactions in the last day. So I know that you normally you, you calculate you know active users over a, like longer period, it's just two weeks or something like that. And uh, I already got some like people asking if we could track also that. But you know if you just look at the basically users active in in, in the last day, in the last twenty four hours, uh, it has been one four point four thousand, so fourteen hundred users. Um, and this, this, these are the numbers we want to track for uh, the to monitor the adoption. Of DP tokens, but PNT tokens, uh, token holders, is something completely different. And uh, as Jeremy is saying, um, like um, it would be nice to see, uh, you know, more PNT holders uh, using P tokens, but also maybe even more P tokens users uh, using PNT. And I think it's really nice. And actually, it was a very I, I, a topic we discussed for a very long time. Um, to you know, it's it's. It, it's very interesting and important, in my opinion, that you are not forced uh, as a P tokens user to uh, hold PNT. It's just an option. It's uh, it's not mandatory. Um, so it's it's very important that the two things are optional and they 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 are not forced to go to get to go together. Um, but at the same time, um, I think that initiatives uh, uh, such as uh, you know the the Edu card, for instance, that now is shipping that I was mentioning earlier, uh, are really interesting. Uh, um, like uh, um, operations that um, we we are proposing uh, and ac activities where basically the adoption of P tokens um, is um, like uh, improved because basically the utility of P tokens is improved because you can use um, you know um, a non custodial card with tokens uh, that you know belong to other chains right um while staying on a single chain which is connected to the card such as uh, ethereum since it's based on loopring um but at the same time time with things like uh, the edu card as you will see also with the uh, like a revision of the um cashback program that we'll publish in the next few days um we are more and more like um, increasing the interconnection of PNT token holders and P tokens users. Because basically, if you have PNT at stake into the DAO, um, you also get higher cashback, for instance, uh, from, uh, fr from the Edu card usage, which may be done via P token. So, for instance, you may spend, um, you know, PBTC if you want to spend Bitcoins via, uh, you know, your debit card. You can do it with PBTC, P tokens BTC. Um, and if you have at stake PNT within the P network DAO and you have enough, 
then you will get uh, you know a cashback in PNT tokens and in other tokens, as you will see in the next few days, um, depending on that. So it's basically uh, an incentive which is connected with PNT holding, which is not mandatory, but it helps in case you are interested to, to have a higher cashback. So it goes in that direction, the direction that Jeremy was just uh, um, just talking about. And I think it's just you know another initiative to obtain the, the, uh, something very similar, like an overlapping. And I think that actually, um, PNT, especially if it gets stronger and stronger as a token, as we all hope. Um, basically, if PNT will, will go up, increase in value and get more visibility, it, it, it's very likely that uh, uh, it will incentivize people to use P tokens and the P network more. And at the same time, if P network and P tokens get more traction and get more used, uh, there is a stronger incentive to, to become a PNT token holder because basically it's more profitable, for example, to you know get your chunk, uh, your uh, small portion of a node, maybe by a period DAO, and you know you can actually use your PNT uh, to get a part of the fees that the network is accruing. So, um, so things are sort of interconnected. It's nice, in my opinion, that uh, you are not forced to, uh, to use both if you don't care, uh, but you can and you, you, you benefit from it if you do. Yeah, I agree. And also, I mean, in general, what Jer what you were saying, Jeremy, about having, uh, you know, like two separate communities, one of users and one of PND holders. Um, I mean, we are trying to um, basically merge these two communities so that one become becomes the other. Um, one initiative that we are doing is the Edu card that Thomas mentioned, but also, for example, on Pancake Swap, we had um, a long discussion also with the Pancake Swap team uh, about launching the BPNT liquidity pool. Because I mean, the standard way would have been to launch PNT BNB, but um, in the end, what we launched that is PNT PBTC. So of course, that was actually the very first pool that was launched uh, with uh, you know a, a base token that was not bnb or uh, BUSD, but was actually pvtc and in that case i mean we decided to go this way because again because of the reason that you were saying so we thought that this way we could uh, try and go in the direction of merging these two communities and let you know pnt holders be aware of you know, uh, P tokens as well, and same as the uh, as the opposite. So we would get basically the pancake swap community to also be aware of PNT and what P tokens does. So um, yeah, I mean, I agree that that's definitely one point that uh, we should work on um, and improve on. So yeah. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. In general, I mean, um, I think that the community also has, uh, you know, some valid points and questions on this. So I wanted to read something that uh, uh, the people were asking or commenting. Um, so we have a few questions for Jeremy, actually. So one question is, hi, Jeremy, I am for the proposal. Do you think to stay do, do you think you are going to stay on XDAI blockchain or maybe you will add other blockchains uh, as uh, a period pool? Um, for right now, our plans are to stay on XDAI, um, but we are exploring other projects that we may uh, be forced to be on a different blockchain. Um, but as of right now, we are just staying on XDAI, um, just simply because of the low cost transactions and it's and it's stable you know stable transactions so yeah makes sense yeah yeah i think that you know ethereum gas fees are too volatile you know <laughs> yeah. yeah um so i think we already briefly answered this but what's the gain in running notes if someone cool. wants to yeah um maybe jeremy maybe you want to answer since uh, you you basically answered that question earlier <laughs> i just All want right. to say 130 percent apy currently yeah that's a short <laughs> summary uh, i should summary of it <laughs> um so yeah i mean uh, the benefit of of owning or co-owning a node you know there's a lot of benefits you know besides 
you know, it just depends on, you know, what you're most interested in. If you're interested in, in profits, you know, then there, there's plenty of ways that you're earning as a node, you know, from the 0.25% peg out fees, um, peg in fees may even be, you know, introduced at a certain point. Then you have uh, cross chain for the, uh, like NFTs using the portals. That's like cross chain metadata. Um, and you, and you earn off of that, like 0.05% or $5, whichever, whichever is greater. And, uh, and then on top of that, when you're, you also earn the, the P network DAO uh, staking rewards. Uh, and if you co-own a pool, if you co-own a node with us and join a Perion pool, um, you know, then you are opened up to a whole nother set of rewards as well. Um, with the ION, as, as I mentioned earlier, where you take your ION, you could stake it into Perion DAO. Uh, you earn, you know, staking rewards off of that. You earn governance power. And then you uh, are exposed to our diverse asset pool inside of uh, the Perion DAO. So, uh, and then that's just on profit end. And now if you're actually interested in, you know, blockchain technology and, and supporting projects like P Network, who, who is trying to make, you know, interoperable, you know, system where all blockchains can be connected, which is extremely vital, you know, if we want to see blockchain in the mainstream, you know, then, then you want to own a node. And, you know, then it, it helps with the centralization of P Network. That helps, you know, add security to P Network, you know, and then it also creates like a positive feedback loop in a sense where when we add more nodes on the P Network, it adds more decentralization and security, which then in turn, will, people will be more, you know, willing to add more value onto the network. So then when there's more value added onto the network, that means there's more transactions happening, which means more people are going to want to be nodes on the network. So you see this, this positive feedback loop that will occur. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's many, many reasons why you should definitely own or co-own a P network node. Thanks, Jeremy. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done anything. I think his explanation was pretty <laughs> good. So um, in general, um, I want to remind everyone that pnetwork.watch, uh, that maybe, maybe, Alice, can you maybe uh, like type it in the chat so people can, uh, can see it? It's like a, um, a website that you can use to monitor, um, you know, data um, around the adoption of the network, uh, volumes, uh, users, and many other things. So there are a lot of metrics that you can use as a perspective node operator, for instance, uh, to do your math and see you know, um, where the adoption is going and you know, how, how much um, you, may, you may earn from running a network node, for instance. So um, um, I, I think it's a very useful tool, uh, especially considering that on the top right corner, you can actually change um, the reference uh, time span, and you can choose a different interval and see, you know, how things have evolved over time. And you know, you can also you can do your own projections basically and see where uh, you know things may be going. Um, so it's definitely something interesting um, to to spin up a node, especially now uh, that the APY is so high. It may not always be that high, especially if a lot of new nodes join, right? Um, cool. So let's see if there are other questions uh, um, to, that we we, we can take. Yeah, I copied here also a few questions from uh, the Slido. So, yeah. Yeah, but first, maybe, can, can, can we, uh, since we just asked that question to uh, Jeremy, um, I would ask uh, him um, another one that I can uh, see here from uh, the questions users have uh, asked so far. Uh, so one is um, from Danilo. He is asking if there is any way to basically uh, contact you, Jeremy. So if there is a like one, uh, a channel or a contact uh, like your Telegram handle or anything that he can use to reach you. And the second one from the same user is if there is any way to use the DAO and the Ethereum DAO without using MetaMask, uh, for example, I guess using Wallet Connect or things like that. Uh, so yeah, you can. Uh, uh, my Telegram handle is Jeremy. A Klein, J E R E M Y A K L E I N. That's that's my Telegram handle. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, and um, you want to answer the question about the well, wallet? That you they were asking about if you could just use what MetaMask. Um, no, yeah. I mean, did you yeah. The question is so what I mean? Can I uh, use Perion and interact with Perion without MetaMask? So. Oh. With something oh. like Wallet Connect, for example. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe I believe you can. Um, uh, yeah, I believe I believe you can use Wallet Connect. 
uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I basically, you know, suggest that everyone uses MetaMask. Um, but yeah, if you're having any trouble with the wallet, feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you out. Perfect. Yeah, they're saying I'm a pro at X, at XDAI, but not at MetaMask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let's get another question. So I would say that's for you, Thomas, maybe. Um, no, he disappeared. So let me ask one more to you, Jeremy. So uh, it's, I saw you put my telegram. It's uh, Jeremy A. Klein, not just Jeremy Klein, right? Or, or uh, oh, no, sorry. Just, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. It is. Yeah. You're right. I, I do have Jeremy Klein. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So what, what was the question? Uh, so, well, it's actually more of a statement. It's ha has anyone noticed how in the last 30 days uh, it made over 200K in fees, the network, despite the price fall of everything pretty much? So I guess that I will rephrase this into... Um, so basically, what do you think about uh, um, the correlation between usage and PNT price, if there is any? Is this question for me? For anyone? Yeah, anyone. Uh, I don't know. I mean, as for me, I mean, my my opinion is that things, uh, you know, PNT price is basically following it, you know, the market trends um, many times. I mean, especially when going down, right? Um, we, we have seen the, the whole market uh, has crashed in the last few weeks. Uh, and, you know, every time that the, PN, that the Bitcoin price goes down, um, you know, <laughs> all the rest uh, follows and uh, similarly goes down. So that's to be uh, expected. Uh, it's nothing related to the growth of P network or to anything like that. Indeed, we have seen that the total value lock has decreased in the last few weeks uh, as a response to first uh, the decrease. Since we are tracking the total value lock in USD terms, um, th this is sort of a direct consequence of the fact that the market has crashed in general. Um, and second, because our, some users have panicked and maybe they they have you know pegged out. Um, in part, uh, their bitcoins or bitokens uh, in order to sell them or things like that uh, as a response to the market crash. So this is something very common. So um, in, in general, this leads to higher volumes, right? Uh, because you, you do peg-ins and peg-outs. So uh, the network doesn't really benefit, uh, like PNT and the P network don't really benefit directly from the total value lock itself. But from the volumes, so if even with a relatively smaller total value locked uh, volumes may be higher if people continuously peg in or and peg out, right? Um, how, however, it's sort of uh, reasonable to expect that a higher total value locked uh, may lead to higher volumes. So this is what uh, you know our uh, what we are aiming for, what we want to achieve, right? Higher total value locked and higher volumes. Um, However, uh, you know, price of PNT is not really, you know, uh, connected in any way. I wouldn't say it's correlated with uh, uh, fees you can accrue, not just yet, uh, but I expect it will be more and more in the future, especially if the project keeps growing. Like if volumes keep increasing, uh, then it will be impossible to ignore it and to ignore the APYs uh, that, that, you know, uh, that you will have. Uh, um, distributing the fees for those higher volumes. So, of course, it will make sense for everyone at some point to just buy PNT. Maybe you would like, maybe at some point you may want to short it uh, to edge against the price of PNT potentially going down for market trends or uncorrelated reasons. But you, you still, you will want to have liquid PNT tokens in order to, uh, you know, spin up a node and uh, to, to get a chunk of, uh, you know, uh, those fees since the APY should. Uh, Easily go up, go up a lot with uh, if volumes increase. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, just, just to give an example, if currently the APY is say 130 percent, just to give a random uh, like an example, an example, and volumes double for at the current size we have doubling volumes is like uh, something uh, um, really easy. I mean, I, I think it's it's rather easy to achieve. Um, and having uh, twice the volumes we currently have for peg outs, for instance, will mean the APY is something like, uh, you know, 260% uh, 
so it's really high and but you know in order for the if people buy pnt and spin up a node um with 200,000 pnt as it can is for example then what it will mean is that basically for the for uh, in, in a, like in a, in a scenario where volumes are twice as much the, today's volumes so they double um and the number uh, and the apy stays the same so it still stays at 130 percent it would mean that uh, uh, you know we get uh, the double the number of nodes we have today so if you um so you either have 260 percent apy which is just unreasonable because i mean this is uh fees are not accrued in pnt they are accrued uh, in you know bitcoin uh, litecoin and things like that so if you have uh, as in a regional market you expect to see um like uh, increasing volumes uh, leading to an increase of number of nodes um we my, with my example above uh, that i have just made um you would need to see for the apys to say the same like 11 new nodes 11 new nodes means uh, um basically 2.2 thousand um 2.2 million um pnt tokens both on the market to spin up a node so this is what uh, uh, may push the price of pnt up eventually if volumes increase right and of course, you know, as you know, everyone knows, uh, those things are also driven by general acknowledgement from the community. So more visibility of the project, uh, listing on new exchanges. I've seen there is a question around that. Um, we, there's, I, no, I, there's always a question around that. Yeah, there's always a question about <laughs> listing and things like that. As we always say, we're not allowed to share anything in advance. But what I can surely say is that in the coming weeks, uh, PNT will be listed on two major exchanges. Um, I cannot name them, so please don't ask. But um, you know, we, we have worked a lot on those listings and we, we keep working on new listings and things like that. Some exchanges just list by themselves. Some other cases, they want to collect material around the team or they want to discuss co-marketing activities, things like that. So we are working on all that. We understand it's very important, especially for the community and for the acknowledgement of PNT and for, to make PNT more accessible, even to wider communities that may not uh, uh, you know, find it easy uh, to buy PNT on Binance uh, or on Bitfinex, right? Or on Uniswap, they may want to buy it somewhere else. Um, so listing is important. We are working on it and we are delivering on it as you will see in the next weeks. I think also, um, uh, well, a couple of questions that are interesting are, well, according to Thomas, does the community had enough discussion on the next proposal uh, showed on the forum? and in the Telegram groups. Uh, and like a related one is, did you have some feedback from active users of the groups? I did not find a clear orientation force to support or decline each, uh, the proposal. Yeah, sorry, it was muted. Um, so, I mean, if you if you check the proposal on the forum, you, you will see that we we have got some uh, some answers um, to like to the proposal, some feedback, and we got some also on Telegram groups uh, from the community. So I will say that there has not been enough in the sense that I would like to see much more, and I think it's achievable. Uh, however, um, I know that many users maybe because they're a bit lazy and they prefer to just you know share a very quick comment uh, on Telegram. Uh, for example, on the forum, I don't remember how many messages were posted, but uh, probably just one. While um, on Telegram, um, I received a lot of uh, feedback, actually, much more. Um, and I try to encourage people to, you know, go on the forum and post their answers there, just to so that it's available to a wider audience and it's available in a format which is easier to digest than Telegram, right? Um, so these these are, in my opinion, the uh, you know, things we should encourage over time. Um, and, uh, you know, I've seen also some ideas getting proposed mostly on Telegram groups related to the network, both official and unofficial ones. And again, I'm encouraging people to, you know, start a new forum proposals and things like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's never enough in the sense that uh, um, while the community grows, it's more and more important to always get, uh, you know, feedback um so that uh, uh, you know proposals can be reiterated and made better and better over time so i i will never say said uh, feedback was enough i would just say um you know there was some feedback 
we can always get more feedback. And this is what we should be aiming for as a community. Also, I think that uh, uh, it may be that uh, the feedback, I mean, the discussion that we start on the forum and the discussion that we start on the, on the DAO may be slightly different in the sense that on the DAO, people, I mean, like the people who vote do actually have uh, money at stake, while people on the forum may, for example, be users. So it may be yeah. a slightly different audience. Um, and in general, I think it's worth uh, hearing, um, you know, the opinion of both and the feedback of both communities because it impacts both. Uh, but in general, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I I think that we will never reach, uh, you know, enough feedback. But uh, the more we get, uh, the the better. Yeah, so I, I think it's I, I think it's really. Um like my, my, my point uh, is supported even by the fact that just in this poll, Jeremy and Danilo have shared the uh, like feedback in favor. And these are two people while on the forum, we just have got one message. So, uh, you know, we got more people answering live during the call um, than the ones that have posted on the forum. So, uh, you know, everyone who is connected uh, and that has an opinion uh, that is already, uh, you know, sort of consolidated, or even if you just have questions or, you know, you want to share some thoughts, uh, everything helps. Um, so, you know, you can just, just post on this course um, um, an answer and it will be useful for anyone reading the proposal. Um, but in general, if you, if you don't, you know, want to do that, if you don't have time to do that, it's perfectly fine. And, you know, once, um, like the, especially if you are in favor um, and there is not much feedback against it, um, in that case, I understand there is not a strong motivation to answer, right? Because you will say, okay, fine, it will go, uh, it will be um, proposed as a vote in the DAO as it is, most likely, and I will vote in favor then. So I understand it. However, um, you know, every, every little helps again. And uh, I think uh, spending a couple of minutes uh, to post an answer is definitely worth it. Agreed. So, um... I will try to make the next few questions faster because we are already <laughs> uh, over time. But um, there's a question from YouTube. Um, so Daniel is asking, the main ob objective of P Network is the bridges between chains. But is there another glo global projection accessible to the common, to the common public? I'm not sure I understood the question. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, that the question is, so we are currently focusing on uh, the bridges, but is that the end goal? Or, uh, I mean, what's the end goal? And well, I guess, well, yeah. yeah, you can yeah, go ahead if you want to, ask, to answer. Yeah, I mean, I guess my answer is, uh, well, cross-chain communications, I think it's a very important piece of the puzzle within... Uh, the blockchain ecosystem in the sense that I see like uh, um, I see blockchains as uh, you know as we could see for example all of the cloud services so we have Amazon Web Services we have Azure we have OVH we have many we have Google Cloud Engine at, at, at the end I mean the end user so whoever you know uh, like goes on a website they don't really care about uh, where the server is hosted. So I think that in the long run, the direction where blockchain will go is basically having users, having mass adoption, and so that users don't really care about, uh, you know, like what kind of blockchain is being used uh, underneath. So if that's actually where we are going, then cross-chain communications and what P network does is really crucial. And it's sort of like what Cloudflare does for the internet, right? So it makes like, it basically abstracts out everything for the end user and it makes all of these blockchains communicate. So I guess that, well, yes, in practice, we are focusing on creating more bridges. So like the day-to-day -day work is creating more bridges, creating more usage for the bridges, is expanding to NFTs, but in general, I mean, the actual goal of P Network is creating syner synergies between all of these blockchains 
in a very simple way for the end user so that the end user doesn't need to bother about you know being on one chain or the other or the fact that uh, bitcoin cannot be on ethereum uh, unless it is tokenized so they just care about uh, you know using whatever DeFi tool so i think that p network really helps in this yeah, before focusing uh, on the P network, uh, our main focus was about uh, uh, implementing an Oracle service, uh, and we have done it since 2014. So it, it has been uh, like uh, almost seven years now, and so we are very familiar with the concept of you know trying to break the barriers uh, of um, each blockchain because you know you want to reach out to an external wider context, and this is what the P network is really about. It's about uh, um, as Alice was saying, basically interconnecting chains so much uh, that basically you perceive them, you experience them as if they were just one simple blockchain, one unique whole big blockchain, but without seeing all this complexity. Like today, it's very technical, it's very complex. You see it in the form of bridges, but that's just, uh, uh, you know, uh, mean uh, to an end. And the end is to obtain, uh, you know, something uh, like, uh, like, uh, um, one big interface for the blockchain world in general, right? Okay, so let's get to the next question for um, for Jeremy. So question regarding the pool. What is your advice about how much time to commit when users entering the pool? In general terms, staying in the pool give more advantages in longer term than a normal staking? Uh, yeah, yeah. So when you stake in, uh, the PNT node pool, uh, it definitely has, you know, a lot better long-term value than, you know, normal staking initiatives because for the most part as well, like any liquidity initiatives and stuff, it, they're not permanent, you know, you're, you're creating liquidity and those rewards will eventually, uh, you know, drop down depending on, you know, volume and stuff of people, you know, adding and, things of that nature. And when you own a node, you're, you're locking yourself in into a spot where you're guaranteed to continue to earn. And this is like whether the price goes up or down. And uh, it's definitely a really good long-term investment. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah, I was reading there's like, there's another question from YouTube from Daniel. Um, will the way of dissemination improve so that P network has greater visibility in the rest of the countries different from Turkey, Italy, and the UK? Well, those are definitely uh, like the countries where we have um, most traction for PNT as a token. P tokens in general, uh, they, I mean, from our metrics and the numbers we see and everything, uh, they are more, much more widely spread to other kind of countries, even in Asia. For example, uh, PBTC is very widely used on the EOS ecosystem um, by, you know, users from Asia. Um, and, you know, there is a much more variance there, I would say. As for PNT itself, surely more listings and more visibility um, of the project, meaning, uh, you know, as we said before, the strategy is about increasing volumes uh, to increase visibility of PNT and utility of PNT, and ultimately maybe even the price of PNT. Those things will lead to, you know, um, uh, more variability, more variance in the kind of community that we address uh, and in the persona of the token holders, the countries they come from, and so on. Maybe we can pick one last question, uh, Alice. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we have two, but they are sort of related. So the yeah. question is, so in regards to Binance partnership announced in January, cross-chain bridges, in what capacity is that currently implemented? And also, what is PNT's role in the, in the upcoming NFT marketplace launching on Binance, considering that P Network has abilities to transfer assets and NFTs cross-chain? Well, maybe I can answer. So as for the NFT part, uh, um, we cannot share much. Uh, we are in discussion with several platforms, including uh, that one. And, uh, you know, the role of portals uh, and of the NFT bridge implemented by a specific portal is the one of being uh, enabling any, you know, uh, complex interaction between blockchains, such as moving, wrapping NFTs or uh, you know, maybe splitting a DAO across different blockchains, things like that. Um, however, um, like uh, 
the NFT bridge can already be used by anyone. They don't need our permission. They don't need a partnership with us. They can, you know, they can just use it. Um, and, you know, on that front, I would just say stay tuned. Uh, there is a lot we are working on and you will see in the next few months the results of this. Um, while as for the first one, uh, um, again, I cannot go too much into the details, but uh, something that you can expect to see is, for example, the direct withdrawal of uh, the P network uh, powered uh, PNT token, which is a uh, token indeed, straight from Binance to BSC, which I think is really important because you know before it was using the Binance bridge implementation, while now it will it will be using um, the P network. Uh, powered one. Also, we have seen on uh, with Telos, for example, that KuCoin, another big exchange, uh, um, has listed uh, the uh, Telos token, uh, um, just not on the Telos blockchain, but just uh, their representation uh, on Ethereum and BSC, which are basically P tokens. So the more we see exchanges such as KuCoin and Binance uh, adopting P tokens uh, as the standard way, you know, to deposit and withdraw token, token representations from some chains um, such as the Telos example or the PNT example of, on BSC, um, I think they, they, they better because basically uh, this encourages a higher volumes and higher adoption um, of, of PNT, higher total value loft and uh, you know uh, basically whoever does arbitrage, arbitrageurs and um, uh, people doing market making on um, you know Uniswap uh, or sorry on um, like DEXs and things like that. Uh, in general, they need integrations with exchanges. So if they do it via P tokens and via P tokens integrations, uh, um, we all benefit from it. So uh, so th this is like um, something that uh, I'm really excited to see happening and that uh, um, I I'm looking forward uh, uh, to see expanding to, to other tokens and to other exchanges. Also, our integration with Phoenix uh, was the first one that sort of opened uh, uh, that path to a native integration with an exchange. Like on Bitfinex, for instance, you can deposit directly Bitcoins, Litecoins, and other tokens via their P tokenized representation on EOS, Ethereum, and so on. So you can just deposit one PBTC from Ethereum and you get it on the exchange as a Bitcoin without slippage, without going uh, by an order book. It's like a direct conversion, it's a direct integration. So things like that, no one has. Our competitors, no, no one of them has a native integration such as this with an exchange. So I think we have a sort of uh, a track record for, you know, good and um, uh, custom integrations uh, um, with exchanges, um, such as with uh, Bitfinex, with Binance, uh, with KuCoin in the case of uh, Telos and things like that. So this will just continue and keep growing and it will drive uh, the growth uh, of adoption of the network for sure. Great. Uh, I think that we answered everything uh, and it was a great chat. It was really nice to speak with everyone from the community. It was great to have you, Jeremy. Uh, thanks, for having me. Present, yeah, thanks for having uh, me. Present Tyrion and share your opinion. So great. So stay tuned. Uh, keep following P Network, keep contributing to it, and yeah, let's uh, speak on Telegram, I guess. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. All right, bye bye.